Salutations and welcome back to another episode of Thormic Craft. Last time we slew the Ender Dragon. Slew? Is that correct? Or is it slain? Well, it's dead anyway, regardless of how it's called. So now we're going to do, uh, do a couple of small things. One mainly, actually. Something we should have done a long time ago, and that's make a automated wood farm. Yes, it's actually possible with Thormic Craft. You need three golems for that. A use golem, a gather golem, and a chop golem. This call. As you can see, it's quite expensive, and I forgot to check if I have the uh, correct amounts of Essentia, which I don't think I do. Arbor, yeah, plenty. Instrumentum, no. Mito, no. Uh, let's put it there, just in case. Because we need that. Three iron axes and an axe of the stream. We got the three iron axes, and I made the axe of the stream. This is like this. But I'm going to have to get the Essentia, then I will create the call, and I will be right back with you. There we go, the column call has been created. Now let's go to the little little area I have prepared. Down here. It doesn't look like anything. I, but I just need to make it look pretty still. But it will function. A little chest here. This is where the trees will be planted. And the chest is where the wood and saplings will be stored. So let's put the... I need one. Saplings in there. We need a golem to actually plant the sapling. So we're going to put that on the chest. Get this on our bar. Grab the use core. Install it. And you may only use that sapling. So it doesn't try and place down wood or anything. Little bugger. And you must place it there. 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 And there. Marvelous, it works. Next, we need the chopper. There we go. He should start chopping as soon as he sees a tree. And of course, we need someone to collect everything. Except, no, oh no, not, no, don't you dare. Oh, you're daring. Uh -huh. <laughs> it sees these. It shouldn't see those. Hmm. Where did he go? Ah, you little. <sighs> Get to place one of those. Uh, warding blocks. Baby stone of warding. See if that works. I will stop him from going out, but I hope it, he will be bright enough to... Oh, bother. Sometimes the range is a bit too much. You only need it in this small area. Right. We'll see how this uh, turns out. And it's quite a bit later now. Uh, I fenced the place up a little bit and re re relocated the chest just so that I might be able to add a lamp of growth in the middle. And as you can see, it should be working. All those logs weren't there before. So, a lot of time has actually passed since uh, the last clip. Showing you, I just built this and this clip, sh showing how it looks. And by a lot of time, I mean a couple of weeks, really. Several reasons. When I recorded that and thought, alright, I'm going to do something, I completely ran them all. I see it's working, just diligently. Dil dil diligently. Why do I even use such difficult words if I can't pronounce them? Anyway, as I was saying. Um, 
I'm a bit stumped, not quite sure what to do next. And Formcraft 4.2 came out. This is. Why are you not working, sir? Probably because of this. Yeah. Double chest act funky with golems. They can only see one of the two chests. And apparently. He sees the, this part and this guy sees that part. Because uh, pro uh, for the program, these are actually just two chests. But it allows you to open it as one. So for golems, these are two separate chests as well. And yeah, as I mentioned, Formcraft 4.2 came out. This is still Formcraft 4.1. Because... A lot has changed in 4.2, and I do mean quite a bit. For example, I don't know if I have done that over here, I think so. Yeah, my Infernal Furnace, just placing a jar like that won't work anymore. And a lot of mechanisms have been added that weren't there before. And of course we have Thormic Tinkering. Um, I don't know if that works or not, or if that has just uh, a working version for Formcraft 4.2. However, I mentioned it quite frequently over here that it gives quite a lot of bugs and crashes because it's usually a in development thing. So I'm not looking too forward to going through all of that again. So I was quite a bit in doubt on what to do, and then somebody invited me into a server, which only has Thorncraft. And as you might know, Thorncraft is still my most favorite mod there is. So when they invited me to a server with only Thorncraft 4.2, I accepted gladly. So this series will continue in that world. And we are on the server now. Um, yes, as you can see, it's quite different, my base already, <laughs> it's still on the ground. Um, yeah, so we had some people that liked intruding and stuff. So I placed down the arcane door, which is a warded door, so you cannot break it unless you're the owner. Same goes with these pressure plates, you can't activate them unless you're the owner. You don't really use that in single player, because it has no use. Hardly any use. But people still thought, hey, we'll dig around it. So I killed somebody here. This is my base. Quite a different appeal. Different. It's, it's very different. The way it looks. Most of the machines I had are still here. Most. I hardly have any farms. If I need animals, I go out and kill them. There are other people online. Salaka is um, the owner, actually, of this server. And it's generally quite active. So many, 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 many things have changed. But to uh, go on where we left off, I do have a little wood farm here as well. As you can see, we have the chop golem, the gather golem, the, the use golem, three lambs of growth. Just look at how quick that grows. And oh wow, got lots of saplings. I need to do something about that soon. And they all go in here. We have that little stone no, stone golem that has the empty core, so it empties out only logs into this hopper, which goes into an item grate. Great. And if you have a hopper connecting to an item grate, then it will just shoot at the items, which is really useful. And actually, I learned that from some of the of I, rem I never used the item grate. And someone remembered me that. Oh, oh dang, we will discuss that very soon. Unnatural hunger is a result of a new mechanic in Formcraft 1.4, uh, 4.2. And it can only be removed using zombie flash. Maybe spider eyes I haven't tried because they're a bit too valuable to be honest. For the Essentia. I love how Thorncraft makes very useless stuff, uh, takes useless stuff and turns it into something quite useful. I've been living on fish, 
It's time for fishing column. That's how we do. And the research has changed quite a bit, actually. Uh, some of the things. We have now forbidden knowledge. Like this research mastery. Or uh, actually our okay, infernal furnace. Minor. And we have moderate and stuff like that. Like brain in a jar. I, there's, there's, there's so much new stuff added to this. And changes. And we'll be going all over all of that right now. Only a couple of things. So there is this thing called warp. Flux we already knew. That was uh, from the alum uh, for the alchemy, if that that purple goo. That was flux. However, warp. Whenever you gain forbidden knowledge, you gain warp. You shut up. And warp gives all sorts of weird eff effects. By the way, these lines. I'll explain that quite a bit later. So warp gives all of these strange, strange effects like that unnatural hunger you just saw. Or flux flu, which means that all of your uh, vis, vis costs go up significantly. And I need to charge these things so badly. This is my enchanter, my infusion room. It looks a bit different, but the mechanics is actually still the same. We have these golems here and those stairs, just like we had in our last world. And we have a fishing golem over here. Only one instead of two. And still I get way too much stuff. And a node charging room. As well as a little bedroom armory kind of thing. Over here. And my blocks are transparent. Never knew that. If I have growth, and we have one of each ring of the apprentice. So these things I've just been collecting them just to get one of all. For fun. So yeah, warp. That's where we were. Get distracted quite easy. It gives you all kinds of weird modern side effects. And you know, still, in the beginning it's just heartbeats. And sometimes gives you, gives you some research points as well. So it's not all bad. But the more you get, the worse it becomes. Eventually, if you do really, really, really big amount of warp you will unlock the eldritch tab and you and we have the r1 focus primal and the staff coffee primal over here void metal and yeah sometimes you are attacked all of a sudden out of nowhere an eldritch guardian appears well actually out of a fog which is even more annoying and they hurt quite a bit and they're pretty scary too so this, this 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 whole tab adds the Eldritch and the Void Metal. Void Metal is pretty cool. Though you need one of the Void Seeds and you need Ilianus. And unless you have an Ender Pearl farm, that's very hard to get. But Void Metal is really amazing. I got a Void Metal Shovel and Sword. And what they do... Oh, this armor is also new, by the way. Yeah, we'll go over that probably next time. But Void Metal has one huge advantage. It repairs itself automatically as long as you hold it. Now, you might think, don't Thormium tools with repair do that as well. Well, yes, but the Void items do not need repair. So we have a just a efficiency 4, Fortune 3, and Breaking 3 pick in here. We hold it. Don't even need to hold it. And you can see it repairing itself automatically, which is really useful. So as long as you don't go batshit crazy with these things, they will never break. Of course, you can break them, but you will have to keep your eye on that. I mean, that's not all too hard now, is it? So there is all that warp. Yeah, over the, the continuation of this series, you will kind of catch on on what warp really is because it's unavoidable after a certain amount of time. I got so much warp, but every now and then I just get wasted with it. 
This is my little alchemy setup. Just bring the jars. This is a little machine I made to create Aldo. Or Potentia. I can choose with this valve. Now it's creating Aldo. And this is a void jar. So that works all nice and dandy. We've got this system over here. We are quite familiar with. A little, little system. Right, I should open you up, or otherwise you won't continue creating herba, and my entire wood production and whatnot will cease. This is watered glass, by the way. It's also hard to break, and it just looks really nice, because it connects. These textures connect, make one wall, which is really nice. Started up a cactus farm, but it isn't going too quick. I mean, this has been here for a very long time already. I need to add lamps of growth for that to work, and then I can couple all this with that to create a ultimate elementum uh, thingamajig. So the armor I'm wearing, fortress armor. It looks really cool. One of its main features is that it looks changed whenever you add more pieces. So this is how the pants look when you have only one piece, and now you see it got a little longer. And a little bit longer still. Same goes for the armor, it just looks like this. Though the main difference is actually on the back. If you add one piece of armor, you get these shoulder pads and a little book. If you add the third piece of armor, you get a scroll and huge ass shoulder pads. As for the helmet, it looks more like a, I don't know, some strange of kind of weird Russian cap or something, I don't know. You add this, you get a bit more fancy stuff and with this you get a nice little thing here so this armor is really cool it has the same protection as diamonds uh, somewhat of the same uh, durability as well and it's a lot more enchantable at least that's what they say I'm not really seeing that but whatever and of course boots to the traveler there are no boots oh, this one's done there are no boots in that series of armor, so we'll show that in a minute. After I put this one in, uh, artifice. So this only has a helmet, a chest piece, and a legs, thigh guards. It doesn't have boots, which is quite fine with me because that means I can just continue on using my boots for traveler. Apart from that. In the artifice, there is very little difference. In Golemancy, I don't think there's any difference. Alchemy, yeah, there is There is difference in alchemy, for sure. Uh, this, purifying bath salts, it allows you to turn water into some kind of silvery goo. That will reduce your warp. But when I tried that, it complete, I dipped into it and it used up the liquid. And it's a bit too expensive for that. I mean, just look at that. Salus Mundus has changed how to make this. It used to be an essence. Two essence. Four? Two essence. To make a Salus Mundus. But now you have to create a balance chart and smell that. Which you create. Why doesn't that work? But the balance chart you create using. Where are you? I mean, it should be an alchemy, right? There we go. Any shard and two aspect of the five missing. So if you put in air, you need all five ex all, all five primals and not air. So there'll be Ignis, Aqua, Pedito, Terra, and Auto. Off the top of my head. So here a couple of things have changed as well. One of the things, they removed the ability to create uh, gravel and sand, which I really hate because I use that quite a bit as a sand generator. I mean, cobble, come on, we have, we have cobble. So yeah, a lot of things have changed. This is just a quick glance of the most important part. Next time we will go into this little cobble deposit system I have created. Because the main part of it is actually invisible. 
or hidden. And I regret hanging up these vines. Oh. And I regret that as well. Stupid vines. So. Uh, it might be a bit chaotic. There's so much to show. Show much just changed, so. Is anything useful? Not really. Yeah, there's just quite a bit. This is really interesting system. This network. And we will we'll look into that in the next episode for sure. So until that time, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again.